We're in a different time. And we've never had this before. This is nothing if not challenging. It's not always easy to measure how we save lives. Are you going to give us some hope to this? You're there in the front lines capturing it. If it's my kid, I'm not taking a chance. These are the kind of things that change the world. A special agent, a photographer, a mother, and a psychiatrist. What do these people have in common? Fentanyl. The deadly poison that's flooding American streets and killing more than 200 people a day, including very often unsuspecting teenagers. But these four people and their stories are inspiring change, giving hope, and saving lives. I was in the DEA for 28 years, and I had two really cool jobs. Derek Maltz was the chief of the New York Drug Enforcement Task Force, a position his father held before him. And he was also the agent in charge of the Drug Enforcement Agencies, the DEA's Special Operations Division. Sometimes you always wondered, like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. It was so much fun. It was an adrenaline rush every day to kind of actually go out and make the world a safer place. I loved Derek's mission, but I had a lot to learn about what he actually did. The Special Operations Division was a synchronization center of operations around the globe going after transnational criminal organizations. We had the Brits, the Canadians, and the Australians working there as well, and I also brought in the NYPD. Every day we work to put the pieces of the puzzle together of the criminal networks that are impacting the world. We had a very, very clear picture of the threats, and the intelligence was coming in every day. I'm trying to picture what you did, and and I'm just thinking as, you know, kind of like James Bond. I only had Hollywood spies and secret agent references in my head, but I knew Derek would set me straight. You're out there tracking down the criminals and you're, you're arresting them, you're getting them. Right, so basically the really important factor here is this isn't James Bond or the movies. We did everything pursuant to the rule of law. So the job was rewarding because you actually got to see international criminals get arrested and then prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced in a U.S. jail. So what's the biggest threat we're facing now? What I'm really concerned about now is the poison that's being put in counterfeit pills that Americans are taking every day all around the country. Currently, we're losing about 227 Americans a day. 227 Americans? Yes. Families are going up to bedrooms every day and finding their loved ones dead, their faces down on computer keyboards, they have no idea what's hitting them because fentanyl kills instantly. And it's killing Americans at record levels. So that's really, in my world, like the top threat. That brings up a lot of questions for me. Let's take them one at a time. <laughs> fentanyl, what, what is it? Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid. Fentanyl has a legitimate purpose in the hospital for pain. So if you're dying of cancer and the doctor is prescribing fentanyl, that's a good thing. However, fentanyl is so powerful, the Mexican cartels have recognized the way that they can make a lot more money from their products if they mix it with fentanyl. What do you mean by that? Powerful to kill people or powerful to make money? The cartels, they, they're not thinking about the death. They're thinking about making as much money as they can. Why are they using fentanyl instead of other opioids? Because fentanyl is so powerful and it's so potent that some of these People that have a demand, they like the product. So some addicts are actually seeking out fentanyl because of its potency. Right, like they don't really think it through. They don't think like, I'm gonna die. It only takes two to four milligrams to kill you. They also don't understand that the Mexican cartels are not measuring these ingredients in their pills like the FDA would. They don't have professional chemists sitting there with measuring spoons, making sure that everything is you know, done right. Many, many other types of people are taking the pills. So an example would be, I'm a 17-year-old kid. I have a root canal surgery, right? That's not fun. I'm in pain. The doctor prescri over pres prescribes 30 Oxycontin, for example, right? I take the pills. The pain goes away. I get addicted. I want that Oxycontin. Now I'm at a party and my buddy says, hey, check this pill out. I just got this pill. It's Oxycontin. I got it from the medicine cabinet. It's great stuff. I pop the pill. I die. 
Not because it's Oxycontin, but because there's fentanyl in it. It's counterfeit pills from, from uh, laboratories in Mexico. So I'll give you a great example. In 2020, the DEA Phoenix seized 6 million pills that are coming in from Mexico. Roughly 25% of the pills that they examined contain a lethal dose of fentanyl. So that means, in reality, that the 6 million pills that were seized would have killed about 1.5 million people if they hit the streets. Where does a 17-year-old kid get that drug from? Are they getting it from the drugstore? Is it prescribed? Is it on the street? Every major city has drug retail distribution networks operating daily to make lots of money. They're on the street corner, they're in buildings, they're operating out of houses, apartments, and they have a steady supply of drugs coming in. And it's the cartel that has their operatives and their confidants in each one of these cities and when they get the drugs, they push them out down to the street level distributors, and then it gets down to the users. Kids are getting murdered from the Mexican cartel's poison in these counterfeit pills. That's the reality. What's the solution? 